Good afternoon and welcome back everyone. It's been so fun to catch up with all of you to hear what you've all been working on. And now I'd like you to know who's made this event possible. So our steering committee, who's been working on this event for nearly two years now, our host committee, who were ambassadors as we uh, led up to the conference, and if you are a committee member, if you could please give a wave, and if the rest of you could join me in thanking them. You may also know or have noticed on the TV screens that this year the conference was generously sponsored by the Anchor Point Foundation and alumnus Brad Feld and his wife Amy Batchelor have supported the school for a long time. They support women students and they wanted to make this, the ties between our alumni and our students stronger. And so having this event today was at the heart of what they wanted to do. And strengthening those ties since January, we launched the pre-conference uh, series, and we also launched a $1 million goal. And so now here's what you did. Through the MIT Sloan Annual Fund, we exceeded that $1 million goal already. <laughs> but don't worry, we're still counting until December 31st, so you'll still hear from us. <laughs> And you supported fellowships for inclusion, and because of you, the admissions team has had the resources to seat the most diverse class ever. So I'll share a few stats. The MBA class of 2023 is comprised of 44% women. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> the MBA class of 2024 is 48% women. And after being here for 16 years, I have to tell all of you, my heart is so full and I am so grateful. Your dedication is just extraordinary. So here's the deal this afternoon. You'll have the opportunity to meet some of our students a little bit later on at our reception and you will see that the future of MIT Sloan is bright. It is now my pleasure to introduce my friend and former alumni board chair of MIT Sloan, Elisa Black and O'Keefe to take us into our next session. Thank you, Kathy, and the 1990 fan club. Um, <laughs> as a steering committee member, I want to welcome you all on behalf of the steering committee again. Um, when we were working to construct the schedule for the conference, we were intentionally aware that we wanted to think about the breakout sessions from kind of three lenses, looking at impact in the world on a global level, at an organizational level, and at the individual level. Um, <clears throat> Whether we are addressing climate change and sustainability, understanding ways that finance moves the world, considering the future of work, the role that entrepreneurship plays in driving positive change, shining the spotlight on alumni who are working in the nonprofit sector, understanding company culture and what we as business leaders can do to affect change, and even looking inward and turning the lens in because even us here, even those of us here at MIT, have moments when we need support to find our full voice, to bring our full power to bear in the world. With the amazing lineup of speakers that we had and the fact that we could each only attend a few of the sessions, we wanted to take some time now to reflect on what we heard together, to share collectively, to benefit from the learning that we hope has emerged, and to think of that as one community. We want everyone to feel like they were in the room where it happened. So, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to turn to somebody next to you or near you who is not in a breakout with you and share with them maybe something that you felt really um, crystallized a learning for you, something that you feel you'll take with you from the conference. And I also want to mention that you may have noticed our colleague over here scribing. She's um, Kelvy Bird, crystallizing the learning and the engagement in a visual format. So we want to thank you, Kelvy, for your art and for the gift, um, we'll make that available in a digital format to everybody at the end of the conference. Um, so we have about five minutes to talk to each other and I'll, I'll suggest you spend about two and a half minutes with the first person talking, then I'll tap the microphone or something and let you know it's time to switch. And if you could share with each other and then we'll have some time to talk and I'll get people to report out from the group so we can all learn a little bit more about the sessions we weren't in. Okay, by my watch. I'm setting you going now. Find somebody and you have two and a half minutes. 
Okay, ladies. I don't have a glass. I'm tapping, tapping a metaphorical champagne glass here. Not that much more stands between you and the drinks reception, so keep that in mind. Um, so let's have some reporting out. I'm pleased to see everybody seemed very animated and sharing what they learned today. Who's the first pair that would like to share with us um, what they learned? If you could raise your hand, and we have microphones for the room. We'd love to hear something you took away from the session and something either you can report for your pair or you can both do it. We'd love to hear from you. Don't be shy. Here, thank you. Thanks, Pam. I'm known for being okay with starting these types of things. So, Thank you. Um, so we, we talked about, I was in the um, future of work session this afternoon mm -hmm. and I really started to think differently about this, this concept of workforce ecosystems mm -hmm. and how you know, we, we think about who contributes value to the company, who is part of value creation and not it's full-time employees, it's contractors, it's subcontractors. In some cases, it's robots and algorithms that apparently get assigned employee IDs so that they can access systems and, and things like that. So that was really um, a thoughtful change in, in my mindset. Do you want to share or do you want me to share? Go ahead. <laughs> Go on. Okay. We, um, I was in a founder uh, class and I just was uh, telling uh, her that how being a founder is just a very lonely place. Mm. And because um, you have the vision and, you know, of course you want the team to be aligned with your vision. Right. And sometimes that doesn't happen organically. You have to work really hard on it. So we discussed that. We also discussed the culture. Um, we thought uh, one of the, uh, my team member was so brave to say that um, I think she was the nonprofit organization that has a gymnasium of 700 students, mm -hmm. and she struggled a lot. And but she was aware enough to know that she needs to face the problem and get some coaching. And it was a culture problem that was created that became toxic, okay. and she was able to turn that around in less than a year. So I was so impressed. I've, I've, this was you, right? <laughs> Can you please raise your hand? Because <laughs> I was really impressed, you know, how you were aware of this and you were able to change that. And then uh, you said that you were just uh, focused on profits and uh, goals, but now you're like focused on like empathy and, you know, and, and then that now you, you became more profitable than you used to be. So I really appreciate that. It was a great lesson for me. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. That's inspiring. And I'm sure a number of other people here would agree with your loneliness point. Am I right? I'm sure some of you. Yeah. Yeah. Who, another pair? Who else would like to share with us what they've taken away from the breakouts today? Go ahead. It's OK. Even if you don't both have to speak, if you'd like to, go ahead. Just here. This lady in the cream jacket. Oh, sorry. It's you. Well, I was in the um, BC area this morning, and afterwards I had a question for Christina, and she's just so wonderful. One thing that I learned today is I asked her for my um, event tech, travel tech business, if one wants to raise money, because we bootstrap all the way, and I sold my first company. The second company, um, so she told me that you don't go to the VC directly because they have 700 mm, requests a month. And you have to go network with the founders, the startups, and go through them to reach the VC. And I, well, I funded my business myself and with my partners, and so that was something no one told me before. So. Good advice. So Good advice. I'll share with you all. Thank, Thank you. Christina. <laughs> Thank you. What about somebody from one of the other sessions? Cryptocurrency or the environment? Um, any of them, it's whatever you'd like to share. Kay, tell us about something from the Founders Forum. 
so I, th I think for us, I hope I, it's okay that I'm saying this, Anne was behind me and she's, I don't know where she went. Um, for us, from the last uh, conference, we've spent three years talking about what we would do that would be meaningful and useful for the entrepreneurs and investors, for our, for our entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I hope there seemed to be so much engagement. We did all interactive discussion sessions on it seemed like there was a tremendous amount of engagement and the forming of a new community, which was our goal. So for me, it was just really exciting to see women who run companies, make companies, want to make companies, invest in companies, really get to know each other and begin to form our own community. So thank you. I hope you all agree. <laughs> thank you. Okay, here this one. Hi, I just, I was in the cryptocurrency and I just was reminded how fantastic Antoinette Shore is as a lecturer. <laughs> Indeed. I learned a lot about cryptocurrency and those deep suspicions I had about that it wasn't, uh, that it had some real challenges. And just wanna point out that when someone calls you a Cassandra, Cassandra was right. <laughs> I love it. Yes, here, Ellen. Um. So I was in the climate change session, and what was fascinating, there were a couple fascinating things about it. First is that there's this interactive free tool, En-ROADS, that MIT developed, the sustainability project. <laughs> And you can see the different levers, whether it's methane or coal or deforestation, and how uh, it can, uh, they took data from all over the place, how that might in impact uh, climate change in terms of, uh, at, there's different levers, but the thing that you might wanna impact is, is where's the uh, temperature's gonna go in the next 10, 30, 50 years. So fascinating what's in that and the tools. And, the t and I also learned that they are going out and talking to policymakers across the board uh, to help them visualize and come up with, well, what happens if we focus on electrification or if we do this? Where is the biggest impact and how is that going to matter? And, and getting more people on board from that and using science-based information to impact policy. And so I uh, encourage everyone to look up the model because that was That's a revelation. Great. Thank you. Anyone from the gender gap session? I didn't get to go to that. Who, would you like to share with us about your learning from that? Yeah, uh, I was there at Donald Sahl's se uh, session. And I, th I took a couple of things away from that which may not be in what he was attempting to communicate, but they seemed important to me. Um, yeah. We learned a lot of, a lot of things about uh, how people defined toxic culture in their workplaces. It was based on a large analysis of glass door data, uh, millions of data points, I think. Um, and one thing I thought was very interesting is he said that uh, basically role conflict and role ambiguity became interpreted as, as a key driver of toxic culture, which wasn't something I expected. I mean, I can see not why now, but it's a very structural thing that feels something very fixable. <laughs> to a leader that one could fix that and it has an actual cultural benefit. So that was, I felt, really useful. And the other thing I felt was kind of hope for the future is trying to figure out uh, in deciding whether to join an organization if the t culture was toxic, people are looking at Glassdoor, um, uh, at this data source here, to look at reviews. But it's very difficult to tell for something that's a relatively small component of all the reviews from scattered mm -hmm. anecdotes whether one organization is better or worse than another. And it appears as though there's an effort to try to persuade Glassdoor to publish a score based on free text uh, inputs of toxicity. I have no idea whether there's any reason Glassdoor would ever do that, but it would be really neat if they did, and it's nice to know that we're trying to get data out there so that there's more transparency. Yeah, so that yeah that's was very really interesting. interesting. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Yes, over here, thank you. And did I uh, just on that same session, it was a comment made by one of the 
one of us, um, about how the real companies that seem to be succeeding at culture are actually like seem counterculture, meaning they're really pushing the edge to say, you know, we are different, come here. We, we want you, we want to have those diverse opinions and the best people, so we're gonna let you be you. So I thought that was a really good takeaway from that session. How can we push that in our or own organizations? Yeah. Yeah, lesson at both individual and organizational level, right? Rebecca. I was in the session on leading communities and I thought the tension between having a long run systemic problem that you're trying to resolve and demonstrating performance and market outcomes and to your donors and investors is, is a tension that's hard to resolve and the tools that MIT Sloan's providing to help people think about how to overcome that tension. Mm. That's a good one. Was anyone in the session on finding your voice, making impact that could share something with us? You have to find your voice to <laughs> Jean, I can count on you. I will find my voice. Um, <laughs> we had a discussion about how women um, are often more lateral thinkers. We take in a lot of the complexity in all directions and that this is in fact a strength despite how some of the more linear thinkers in the world might not sometimes find it to be a strength. Um, I think it would be an interesting follow on discussion over cocktails to think about how we push forward in um, making sure we get those la linear thinkers thinking more laterally sometimes. Is there an example of that that you can share? Uh, not, not a particular I mean, one, but we might find one over cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we have time for another one if anybody else would like to, would like to share. Did we hit all the sessions? Did I miss a session that somebody was in? I wanna make sure everybody gets represented. Thank you, this is not for a particular session, but I just am so delighted to be in a room of such amazing, intelligent, incredibly varied women. It's just a shot in the arm, it's totally invigorating for me. So um, thank you very much. It's really fun to be here with you all. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa, I know that's a sentiment I feel and I'm sure from the applause, everybody else does too. Um, I would encourage you to keep sharing those thoughts today so they stay fresh and picking up on the point of taking that back to our organizations and our communities and our um, families, you know, all the places that we can kind of bring these thoughts out into the world and make a difference is, would be great. Um, before we move on to the next segment, I wanna remind you what the conference guiding principles are all about. Connect, empower, act. So we are a strong community full of women who want to make a difference in the world, who are out there having an impact. And the steering committee's intention really was that the conference would facilitate that, to help us connect first, to strengthen the network and the community overall through the relationships that we begin to build or that we reinforce here today and last night, to empower us bringing the expertise and latest thinking from the school and fresh from practitioners in the field, um, talking about the biggest issues and the key challenges of the day so that we can continue to learn, to grow, to build our skills and use that in service to bettering the world and to act. And well, that's up to you, to us, to each of us, um, starting when we walk out into the reception. And we have a request, um, an immediate opportunity, because although it's SIP week, uh, we do have a few students who are able to join us today, and they'll be coming in in just a couple minutes. Um, they are MIT Sloan's alumni in residence, if you wanna think of it that way. They're the future of our community. And so please make it your mission to approach one of them and to help pass the torch, find out what they're interested in and how you can share your knowledge or your experience or your enthusiasm and help in your own little way to extend the circle, which we can each do. One other point, um, throughout the conference you've seen quotes from alumni on screens and heard even more in the rooms today. As we leave, we'll each receive a commemorative book of quotes. Again, as a reminder of the collective power of our community, of the fact that we do continue in the pursuit of learning and growth. 
and that we're formidable when we take action together. Now, I'm going to invite the students in. If you have an open seat, I don't think there are too many because of SIP, but if you have an open seat, raise your hand so they can see where they could sit. And um, can we give them a round of applause with your other hand to welcome them in?